Last points on demand and supply. Consider this trend. It started somewhere here and it is on going. Now what happens, you know, as we start moving higher, every now and then we will move a little sideways, spend some time, attach some volume. Then again, we break out. Again, we move sideways for a while, spend some time and volume, and again, we break out. Then again, we do the same thing. And we keep doing this, no matter whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. Consider this downtrend. You spend some time, break down, spend some time, break down, spend some time. The pullback goes up. Where does it get resisted? The last time where we had spent, you know, time and attached volume, and then again falls. Make sense? So again, it spent some time here, goes down, spent some time. This time, this uh, balance does not resolve in the same direction, but in opposite direction. And where do we know that the trend has reversed? When we cross the last time where we have spent and attached volume. When we cross that, the trend reverses. So when we are coming down, all these are last points of supply because that is where, that is the last point where sellers got a better of buyers. When we are moving higher, it is the opposite. These are the points where last time buyers got better of the sellers. So this is our last point of demand at the moment. So if market goes below that, uh, this is signaling a potential reversal. It's the same thing. Uh, here is the struggle. We break out, we go higher. Uh, now this could have been the next, but we repaired it. So this is the next. Then we again moved higher and again attached uh, volume here, spent some time here. So this becomes our last point of demand after this. And then this becomes our last point of demand. Now, this can be our last point of demand if we had moved higher and formed a value higher and left some distance in between, but no, we are overlapping it. So we can say that this is still developing. So maybe four or five days consolidation happens here and we develop a big last point of demand, uh, or maybe it becomes a distribution and we reverse, anything can happen. But whenever it reverses, the short term directional bias will only change if we find acceptance below our last point of demand. The same thing will uh, happen when the market is coming down. So here also you can, you know, uh, start thinking about it. So you can see that there is this consolidation then we spend some time below it. So this is our first uh, value forming lower. And then we again go lower last point of, this is last point of supply. Then this becomes last point of supply. Then we have a three day composite which results to the downside. This becomes last point of supply. Then we again go lower. Now you have to see what happens here. This was our last point of supply. And here what happened is actually uh, opposite side came in and uh, it overpowered the seller. So first attempt was made here. Uh, we could not cause, uh, cross this last point of supply. We came back down. We tested this, we again went back. We went back up and then, you know, this was the last point of demand left behind. You can see we tested that and then the trend reverse. So that is how, you know, you track last point of supply and demand. Don't be too clinical in it. Just leave some space for the markets to breathe. Okay. If you make it too uh, strict or very uh, uh, precise, then, then you will, you will miss the, you know, uh, forest for the trees, so to speak. So don't do that. Uh, but have a, a general idea of where the value is going okay and that will be enough